Hi everyone and welcome to a new video on the CBI channel. In this tutorial series we're deploying a Django and React application on Microsoft Azure. This is not the first video in this tutorial series. We've already done two before. In the first one, we've already discussed the architecture of the deployment. And in the previous video, we've already changed our Django backend code. So it is ready for the deployment on Azure. In this video, we're going to continue and we're going to deploy our source code to GitHub using Git. And if we take a look at our architecture, it actually covers the full process on the left. We're gonna go from our local project code on our local computer to storing it on an online repository so we can connect it to the Microsoft Azure portal. And to realize that we're going to be following five steps. We're going to start off by discussing some options for deployment. And I'm also going to tell you which one we will be picking for today. Next, we're going to be initializing Git inside of our local code repository, and we're going to store our code inside of Git. And once we get there, I will explain exactly what that does. Next, we're going to be creating a GitHub repository, because that is where our code is going to reside when we connect it to the Microsoft Azure portal. And we're going to be pushing our code to GitHub using Git. So Git is going to be the bridge between our local code and our GitHub repository. As the last step, we're going to be testing it and making sure that everything works okay. And I'm also going to show you how we can update our code and what that looks like on the GitHub portal. The first step is discussing the options that you have for deploying your code to GitHub using Git. Now, there are two main things that you can do, and I'm going to briefly explain them. The first option is that you push your full project that you have on our local computer to one repository in GitHub. And that just means that both your backend and your frontend code is going to reside in the same repository. That also means that if you have on your local computer, you make changes to your backend, you will push all of the changes from both your backend and your frontend to that same repository every time. And it also means that when we deploy our code, if we make a change to our backend, it will automatically also push everything that we've changed from our front end to GitHub and also redeploy both our backend and our front end because everything is going to be connected. The second option that you can take is deploy in separate repositories. And that means that you initialize Git in your backend, but also do that inside of your front end. And then you create two GitHub repositories, one for your backend and one from your frontend. Uh, and then you just push the code from your backend to the repository of your backend and your frontend code to the repository of your frontend. That does mean that you need to update both your repositories if you've made changes to either one of these. And you also need to do the setup twice. However, um, your backend is completely separated from your frontend now. So if you just have changes to your backend, you just update the backend and nothing happens with your frontend. And it also means that if we've deployed our code and we want to make changes to our backend, it only triggers the redeploy of our backend. It doesn't trigger the redeploy of our frontend. Now, both these options have their pros and their cons. Usually, I always take option one uh, because my projects are often quite small. I work on the code by myself, so I know everything about both those things. So I don't mind them being in the same repository. Um, if your code is a little bit bigger or you're working with different people that are working on the back end and different people that are working on the front end, then option two might be a little bit better because you can separate those deployments uh, and also separate different workloads. So it depends a little bit on your use case and on what you would like to do. Um, for this tutorial series, we're going to go for option one, which is the most basic, uh, yeah, basic thing. We're going to store our entire code into one repository. If you want to go for option two, you can also just do that. Just make sure to initialize Git inside of your backend folder and inside of your frontend folder. And for the rest, you can just follow the same steps, but just do it twice. The next step that we need to take is we need to initialize Git inside of our project because Git is going to be the tool that is going to take our local code and store it in the GitHub repository. But it's also going to make sure that when we process updates, we can see which files are modified or which files are completely new. 
and also make sure that we can process those updates. So uh, first things first, make sure that you have Git installed on your computer. And doing that is very simple. Simply go to git-sem.com and go to downloads and there you can find the download for your operating system. Uh, and once you've downloaded it, you can follow the steps in this tutorial and make sure that everything works the way that you expect. So we are now in our code and the first thing that we want to do when we initialize Git is make sure that we are in the right folder. So I'm going to open a completely new terminal because I want to be in the highest level of my project. And in my case, that is going to be Django React Deploy because that is the folder where both my backend and my front end are in. And the reason for that is I want to push both of these backend and front end folders to our GitHub repository. And for that to work, I need to initialize Git in the highest level of my project. If you want to deploy them separately, so the option two that I've just explained, then you need to make sure that you initialize Git both inside of your backend folder and also inside of your front end folder, and then you can push them to GitHub through that. But in our case, I want to make sure that I'm in the highest level of my code. And uh, we're gonna initialize Git with a few commands. So the first command is going to be git config, and then dash dash global, and we're going to set user.name to our name. And in my case, I'm just going to do my name, but feel free to just put in your own name here. The next thing that we need to config is the email. So we do git config dash dash global user dot email. And in here, I am just going to put my own email address like this. The next config is going to be git config dash dash global push dot default matching and this is just going to be a setting about how it's going to be pushed to your repository and the last config command that we're going to do is git config dash dash global alias dot go checkout and with all of that configuration out of the way we can simply now state git init and this is going to initialize a git repository in our folder and you can immediately see it take effect because all of a sudden all of our folders and all of our files have turned up as green and you can also see that besides every of these files it specifies a u and the reason that it does this is because all of these files are untracked um, because we have not done anything with it. We've not stored these inside of our Git repository, so to say. You will also notice a change inside of your folder structure because next to your backend and your frontend folder, there is now a hidden folder called .git. And this is actually the repository where it's going to store your code before it goes to GitHub. So now we've initialized Git, so Git is ready to use, but we still need to make sure that all of our files are now going to be inside of that Git repository. And we can do that with a few very simple commands. And those simple commands are going to be, first off, git add, and then a dot. And in this case, that means that we want to add all of the different files that we have inside of our Git repository, because the dot means everything. And the next thing that we want to do is git dash am and then specify a message. And I'm going to say initial commit because this is going to be the first commit that we're going to make. And apologies, it actually needs to be git commit dash am and then the message initial commit like this. And now you can see all of the different files from our backend and our frontend that have been added to our uh, Git repository. And you can also see on the left hand side that our files are no longer untracked because right now we've moved them all to that new Git folder. So we have initialized Git and make sure that everything is inside of our Git repository. And now we want to send it to GitHub. However, to do that, we first need to create a repository in GitHub where we can store our code. 
So you can go to github.com and log into your account. And if you don't have an account already, please create one. It's completely free and yeah, it's really easy to do. Uh, and once you are logged in, you will see on your dashboard that you have the possibility to create a new repository. And that is exactly what we're going to be doing. And the first thing that we need to set in that repository is the name. And I'm going to be calling it Django React Deploy Tutorial. And this states that in our new repository will be created as Django React Deploy Tutorial. And I'm going to do a description as well, stating this is the repository for our Django React Deploy Tutorial. Now, next you have the option to uh, put your repository as public or as private. Now, in my case, I'm going to do public because uh, I'm not afraid if anyone on the internet can see the code. But if you have some sensitive things inside of your code or it is for a commercial purpose, I would always uh, pick the private option because then you are the only one who can see and commit to that repository. Um, but for now, I'm going to keep it on public because my code has no secrets at all. You also here see the options to initialize a readme file. And this is kind of a description of your project. I'm not going to be doing that for now, but you can do if you would like to. And you could also add a git ignore file, uh, but we've already created one inside of our project. So we actually don't need to do that. You also have the option to pick a license. And that's going to tell others what they can and can do with your code. But in my case, I don't really want that. Uh, it's just uh, fine like this. So I'm just going to set the name and the description and then click on create repository. And once it has created this repository, it is going to give you some information on how you can get your code over here. So it states that you can create a new repository through your command line. You can also see here that it uses Git to initialize and to add some things and do it. Or you can push an existing repository from the command line and that is exactly what we will be doing because we have already created our Git repository. We just need to make sure that it uh, is connected to this one right here. So I'm going to copy over the code block on the bottom that says the remote add uh, and also the push. So make sure that you copy this one as well. And then we can go to our code again and simply paste it inside of the terminal and just click on enter. And now it is going to push our code to GitHub using Git. And it seems that it's all done now. So now when I go back to my GitHub repository and I click on enter, you will see that my backend and our front end folder are now inside of this repository. And uh, you can also see the message that we gave it of initial commit is displayed right here. So now our code is on GitHub using Git. Now a few important things for us to check. In the previous video, we've uh, added a git ignore file in our backend code because certain files we did not want to leave our local code. And one of the examples on the bottom was the database because our SQLite database does not need to be uh, included on our GitHub repository because it's not going to do anything during our deployment. So just as a check, when I go to my backend folder right here, you can also see that that file has not been included in our deployment. So that seems to be working all fine. Now, what is going to happen when we want to update our code? Well, let's take a look at that right now. So for example, in our uh, front end, I have some files in my source one and I can for example change the text in one of my components because I have an about page uh, which currently only has the text about but maybe I want to say this is my about page so I've made a small change to this code if I save it you will immediately see that a Visual Studio code is going to compare 
our output to what we currently have in our Git repository. Uh, and it's going to mark this file as modified uh, because we've changed. This is a change uh, opposed to what it was before. And you can also see if I add another file, let's just call it another.jsx. It is going to list that one down with a U, same as before, for untracked. So it's going to keep track of the different changes that we have. Now I'm just going to delete this another.jsx file because we don't actually need it. But let's make sure that this change text of the about page is now going to end up inside of our GitHub repository. Now, the first thing that we need to do again is make sure that this change um, is in our Git repository, so on our local computer. And to do that, we can do again git add and then just everything. And we can also add a message that says git commit dash am. And I'm going to state um, change to about page. And by doing this, we have uh, successfully stored it inside of our Git repository. But now to get it to our Git Hub repository, we can simply do Git push. And this is going to make sure that everything from our Git repository is going to be put inside of our uh, Git Hub repository. And when we check it in our Git Hub repository by refreshing the page, you will see that our front end now has a change that has been made now. And you can also see our message that we made a change to the about page. And if I follow that message, you can see that previously we had about, and now it is, this is my about page. And if I go to our front end for code, you can also see exactly where that code has been changed because uh, the last commit message shows up in our src folder and then in our components folder and then specifically in our about the jsx folder and this is kind of how you can keep track of the different changes across your code and that is all that we're going to be doing today in this video we've successfully pushed our front end and back end code to a github repository using git in the next videos, we're going to continue and we first are going to deploy our Django backend code to Microsoft Azure. And after that, we will do exactly the same for our React.js frontend. And as the final step, we will also make a video about the costs and troubleshooting of your deployment. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe and leave a like. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.